Welcome to Aspects of Writing. I'm your host, James Kelly, and my guest panelist is Janet Corsi. Our guest for today's show is writer-director, producer Renee Mullen-Masters, and the topic of our show is writing and the internet. But before we get to my guests, my panel and I would like to read a few fun quips or quotes about writing, and Jan, I'm going to let you start. Television has brought back murder into the home where it belongs. That's Alfred Hitchcock, and I love that uh, one. Yeah, I like it. And Renee? Well, <laughs> Al Gore is quoted as saying, during my service in the United States Congress, I took the initiative to create the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> he would later retract that statement by saying, that day I made that statement about inventing the Internet. I was tired because I'd been up all night inventing the camcorder. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, that is good. That is, all right. yep. <laughs> and mine is by Bill Murray. He wrote on Twitter, our kids' biggest challenge will be to find a username that's not already taken. And, and, and that, that's true. No kidding. All right. If you're just tuning in, I'm your host, James Kelly, and my guest panelist is Janet Corsi. Our guest for today's show is director, writer, Renee Mullen Masters, and the topic of the show is writing and the internet. Uh, my panelist is Janet Corsi, and Jan's been on the show about five years. Jan, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your book, The Secret of Time. Well, time. The, the Secret of Time is about seeing the other side of the pancake, about realizing that even though you think you're set in stone with one thought, you're not set in that stone if that thing actually happens to you. So people keep an open mind, and uh, I hope anybody who gets my book enjoys it. Let me know. Just go on JanetCorsi.com and uh, say, hey, I read it. It was okay. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. And our first, or our, our guest is writer, director, and producer Renee Mullen Masters. Renee believes in inspiring greatness. Um, that is what Renee has always been about. Renee has spent the past 25 years changing the lives of students nationally. She helps them learn how to use their brains the correct way for success. Following ch uh, college graduation, Renee was a speech pathologist with the uh, Fountain Valley School District. She then formed a private practice in Orange County, California. Now living in Ashland, Oregon, for over a decade, Renee took care of her husband, best friend, and partner who suffered from vascular dementia. When he passed away four years ago, he was about the age three. Uh, once he passed on, Renee's life changed completely. Single again after 30 years of marriage, she decided to pursue her love of writing and completed her first novel, Peace Train. A screenplay has also been written, and the film is now in the works. In addition, Renee is the author of You Are Smarter Than You Think, Using Your Brain the Way It Was Designed, The Missing Piece to Success. That sounds so exciting. And in addition to writing books and producing films, Renee is a regular guest on national radio shows talking about how to turn education around with one simple step getting students to value learning over, mentor, over memorizing. Whether we learn from her book or films, the inspirational lessons are there for all from this, from masters, from the master. Yeah. I'll get it. <laughs> I need your speech therapy. Uh, Renee, <laughs> please tell us more about your work. <laughs> you don't need a speech therapist. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> You're okay. We all screw up sometimes. Uh, um, yeah, well, I am I'm very excited about what I'm doing. Um, I uh, This new book called Peace Train was written to inspire and to bring a new idea to people's minds. And... It's a story about three individuals, two Palestinians and an Israeli. And they, they become really good friends here in the United States. And then they go home. Something horrific happens to them. And they make a decision, no more. This is the end of this. We are not going to let this happen again. And they begin doing uh, friendship pods with their enemies wow. all over their country. And it changes their country in a way no one thought could ever ever happen so wow. and it's it's to it's to bring in a new thought instead of focusing on the problem or focusing on the solution and if people want to join the conversation they can go to peace train com and and jump on board and let us know what you think 
It so. sounds so exciting. Yeah, it does. I, yeah. I cannot wait. Yeah, and <laughs> you're you're in the process of getting the, the movie off the ground. And you have a website now that you actually are documenting the process, I believe. Well, we're going to have it soon. And the, the audio book will be out probably at the end of this week, which you can get on iTunes and all the different platforms. Okay, and then the e ebook is coming out the first of February and and by that time we will have a website that's going to be documenting all the you know we'll have photographs of what's happening with the film. So where would they go to st stay in contact with you so they'll know when all this is coming up? They can go to um peace train movie dot com. <clears throat> can you pre and can you pre order say again? Can you pre order the ebook? Yeah, the if you go to Amazon, you can pre-order the ebook. There's already 200 people that have pre-ordered it, and um, they should have a notice on there when the audio book is out. The yeah, we don't know. They don't tell us. <laughs> they don't tell my publisher. They just say, "Oh, it's live today." <laughs> well, make that 202. I can guarantee you today. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah, and also I want to know, Renee, who published your book? It's beyond publishing. And my experience, the problem with publishers today is they don't market books very well. Right. These guys are master marketers. Oh. Um, and they get they are getting the word out. They did a um, short uh, clip on Peace Train a couple of days before Thanksgiving. And... They got uh, all, almost 3,500 people to view this short video in a couple of hours. Wow! Wow, that's wonderful. So, yeah, they I've you know I've blown through a bunch of uh, you know internet marketers who don't know what they're doing, but um, Michael's really good at he just you know go check out Beyond Publishing. They are fabulous. They wow. are really really good at marketing. I am definitely going to check out Beyond Publishing. Yeah. yeah. We'll get him on the show. <laughs> yeah, yes. get him on the show. Yeah. Michael's great. You, yeah, just get him on the show. They're really good. Now you really also good. wrote "You're Smarter Than You Think," and you all didn't. Don't you have a website that's dedicated to that as well? Yeah, it's it's you're smarter than you think dot com. Okay, and what is that about? It's um, based on Dr. Howard Gardner's research. Um, I wrote the first version almost thirty years ago. Um, and I've sold, you know, 100,000 copies to nursing students. Wow. And it's, it teaches you everybody learns differently. Okay, we all know that. Yes. But we don't know how to use that information. And we, two-thirds of us in school, we feel like we're walking into walls yes. because school doesn't line up with our brain. I worked with a young girl at Christmas time, one of my neighbors, and she's um, a junior in, in high school, and she just thinks she's stupid. And after she took the, you know, read the book, or I worked with her, um, it, her stepfather came up to me and said, man, you named that book correctly, <laughs> because this kid is, she's just like a different person. She gets it. So, well, you know, you, unfortunately. You know, Renee, when I was in high school, one, I was with the Future Teachers Association. That was going to be my degree was in teaching. And one of the things I did is I put together programs for the junior high on tutoring, the kids from junior high. And one of the first things that happened when we started this program was I went to the junior high to tutor someone in math, and I happened to have had the same math teacher. And I struggled with that class. Now, this kid was failing in almost every subject. And I think it's because he thought, well, I'm not smart. I'm not going to be able to accomplish anything. I started tutoring him, and I understood what was going on because the teacher that he had shared that I had had in the past taught from the book, and it was strictly yeah. from the book. And he was one of those that's on the board. It's in your book. You can read uh -huh. it. And sometimes that's not what we need. Sometimes we need someone uh -huh. to explain it in a different ang from a different angle or a different uh -huh. perspective. This kid mm -hmm. became an A student, and this kid's mm -hmm. whole persona changed. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. considered a hoodlum in school, he became a kid who, who got along with others, starting achieving. I mean, it really can make a difference in, you know, teaching someone you are smarter than you think you are. So. Uh, well, you know, the, the truth is, about two thirds of the population 
is walking around. They've been successful, but they feel stupid. I know I was like that. I had a master's degree, and I thought somebody was going to find me out. And it's just this little voice inside that says, you are stupid. You didn't do, you had to work really hard in school. And it's tragic. It yeah. really is. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I think that, you know, and you still, do you still, I know this is where you started making videos. You used to do videos for this site, I believe. Say that. You used yeah. You used, you used to produce your own videos for this website. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, we have an online training. There's over 300 videos in the online training. I teach it. It's interactive. It's really fun. And it takes about two hours to do. And it's instead of reading the book, you can actually experience the book. Yeah. Oh. Wow. So that's neat that they can just go to there and tune right in if they don't want to read it. Yep. They can do it uh, instantly. What, what is that website again? It's you are smarter than you think dot com. You got to write it all out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. going there when I go home because I've just started a new job and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I've bit off more than I can chew. <laughs> but maybe not. Maybe you are smarter than you think. <laughs> you are smarter than you think. Everybody is. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's a very worthwhile thing that you, you're doing there. And you Absolutely. said you've been doing that for 30 years? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, I was, um, yeah, I've, and I've been primarily working with nursing because in nursing, the kids have to learn the material Yeah. Um, because they have to apply it or they'll kill somebody. Yes. And um, most of the kids today don't even know what learning is. So um, I'm getting some new schools because kids are dropping out of nursing like, you know. Yeah. They just, they can't handle it. It's well, a tough course. We're going to be talking about the internet in a minute, but I do want to ask you a question when it comes to that book. Why do you think it is that people doubt themselves? I know you said you did, and I'll tell you what my mother did. My mother was in physical therapy eons ago before you had to get a degree in order to perform physical therapy. And as she would, you know, as time went by, she actually was teaching students on, you know, um, on the job training. Yeah. And after she had retired from that, she always felt guilty that she didn't have her degree in physical therapy. And I said, why do you care? You were the one who were teaching the students. Yes. And she said, yes, but I never had my degree. So finally at age 60, I said, you know, I'm tired of hearing about this. Go back and get your degree. And she <laughs> did. Oh, that's so great. You know, so Good now she, you. she can't say now, you know, why did you know, so... You know, yeah. that, it is interesting how we do that to ourselves. It is. And I, I don't know. I think it's based on, you know, the beliefs that are thrown around in the world. You know, we get stuck in ruts. Yeah. And um, we think, you know, I always had this question when I was in school is that how come everybody was getting it so easy and I was struggling? And the funniest darn thing is my best friend in second grade got moved to third grade because they told her she was smarter. And fast forward, we're in a, a graduate, we're in college together and we're in a, a botany class. And it's taught experientially, which is wh how I learn. And I got the highest grade in the class and she got the C. This is the person uh -huh. who was supposedly <laughs> smarter yeah. than me. Yeah. And it's it it was like it confused me. Yeah. I thought, whoa, what's going on here? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to start talking about the internet, and I'm going to read this little ditty, and then we're going to all discuss it. Uh, the internet is a miraculous tool for today's writers. So I'm going to start by reading about an author who wanted to raise three hundred dollars for a Muppet exhibition. And I'm actually just going to tell you the story. It was Amanda Hawking, and she's a paranormal fiction writer. Um, she needed $300 to go to Chicago to this event, um, and so she decided, I have these stories that I've written several years ago. I was unable to get them published, couldn't find a publisher, so I'm just going to put them up on, you know, as an Internet book and see what happens. Uh, long story short, a year later, she had sold over a million copies, earned about $2 million in sales, and after three years of that, she was selling over 9,000 copies a month of her books. And finally, St. Martin's Press picked her up, gave her a $2 million contract. Now, to update that, just so you know, 
This is to tell you the difference between a major publisher and self-publishing. Major publishers can be fantastic if they know how to handle you. But in her case, apparently, things didn't go the way they thought they would because she was doing tremendous until they took over. So uh -huh. they finally released her out of her contract this last year, and now she's back in control again. And it'll be interesting uh -huh. to see if she picks up where she left off because she was a huge success yeah. on her own. Um, uh -huh. So sometimes you know how to market better than the professionals because they just don't know what to do with you sometimes. Uh -huh. Right. And didn't she also change genres? In Well, she mainly wrote paranormal fiction. Yeah. Um, she did change, I think, some somewhat. I think she went to some romance on, on yeah. that as well. But it's interesting how, and it's also like you were, even with going back to your book, you know, she was smarter than she thought she was because yep. <laughs> here she had been waiting on someone else to pick her up and, and take her on her journey, and all the time she had the ability to do it and didn't even realize it. Yeah. Well, you know, I think also, talking about the Internet, it's a whole new world for marketing, and yeah. a lot of uh, publishers don't have a clue about how to do it. Right. And, yeah. You know, and I think that could be what went on. Well, and, you, I do this show every week. Jan, you do it almost every week. Yeah. And, you know, the, the amazing thing is, is that I'm still trying to figure it all out. Yeah. Well, I think that um, some of us don't have the right gene, and I'm one of those. <laughs> <laughs> we, we came in too late. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's but, what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> well, you know, there is a little bit to that. I mean, the younger you are, I think the more almost like you'd say street smart you are when it comes to technology yeah. because you grew up with it. Right. In my case, your case, Jan's case, we probably, well, I know I didn't grow up with it. You know, it was nope. something that I had to acclimate myself to and I'm not that good at it. But, you know, we learn as we go and, you know, I know that every time I go out there to do something, I'm better and better than I was before. But when you, that's all you know, there are kids out there who don't understand what, what a handheld phone are, you know, own phone is. It's plugged into the wall. They think all there is is cell phones. Yeah. You know? And, you know, there's another thing is that I understand connection. I did cold calling with my book, and I understand. I can, I can connect with people on the phone. Uh -huh. And I think a lot of kids don't know how to do that. They can only do it through the written texting. Um, yeah. Yeah, texting or and email. Facebook. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. And Twitter. so it's a different it's different. It is different. We had a writer on who took seven years to get his book written, but he actually found someone uh, you know, on the East Coast, he's here on the West Coast, and um they never spoke. The entire time they were writing that book, they never spoke with his yeah. co author. They did everything via messenger. <laughs> Or, you email. know, email, yeah. you know, it, and it wasn't until just before they came on my show that they'd actually met, met each other and spoke for person. the first time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's definitely a different era than, than what we came up in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Totally. So, you know. So it's it's like you have to keep learning. Well, the Internet <laughs> is definitely a tool everybody needs for one reason or another today. Yeah. Yeah. And, you for know, sure. with Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr. There's so many of them out there, and it seems like every time I hook up with one, my daughter tells me how that was yesterday's news. <laughs> I know. So you well, know. you know, I was I was shocked. My um, executive producer told me yesterday that we have over what is it, two thousand followers on Instagram, uh -huh. <laughs> and I was going, really? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, that's what it takes is someone who understands all that to go out there and and get you on the board, so to speak. Um, I'm in that little bit of a dilemma myself. You know, I'm, I'm pushing for my YouTube channel to increase the audience there for subscribers. So I'm going to have to go out there and learn. I'm just going to have to go out there and learn how to do it. Um, I yeah. know there's, there's a way. I just got to figure there's it out what it is. There's probably a YouTube on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there probably is. <laughs> and if not, we could create one. And then yeah, we right. would get, make it happen. <laughs> exactly. Whatever exactly. it takes. But no, it is fascinating how, and you've mentioned so many things already in this interview on how you've used the internet for your project when it comes to Peace Train. Yeah. So... Well, I, I surrendered. <laughs> you know, I know, I know that this is important. So I finally found someone that can help me. 
Well, I'm going to tell you, I know we're getting off subject here a little bit with, with our script, but um, I, I will tell you right now how, how really tremendous the Internet can be for an author. Um, and, Jan, you've been a part of this as well. Yeah. We, we always talk about fundraising and how we go out there and we, and we do these fundraisers to raise money for our projects. And, Renee, we've spoke about this on the phone in, in the past, and I, I told you the story about a friend of mine who went on, on – um, Kickstarter and raised the money to produce her own independent film. Uh, it was a uh, small budget film, right. but the point is she raised the money there, yes. the, the amount uh -huh. of money that she needed to do this film. Yeah. So uh -huh. anything is possible. And then they actually, she has friends who've actually gone out there and made two or three, and one made $10 million to, to go out there, Will Wheaton, to go uh -huh. out there and, and produce his own show back on right. television. So it's, it's amazing how the internet is a tool now for almost creating any project you need. Yeah. Uh -huh. It uh -huh. just depends on how strong you want that project to happen as uh -huh. to how well you'll succeed. And too. understanding. Uh -huh. Yeah. Understanding uh -huh. the internet is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And really understanding its power. Right. And there's a, cause there's a young lady who's doing poetry of all things now. And she's got, she sold a um, hundred thousand books of poetry in one month. Wow! In, uh, I think it was November. She's um, a little. She's Indian and she's from Canada, and um, she has she has a following that's just connecting with what she's writing. Wow. Obviously. Oh, I love hearing stories like yeah, that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had the one guy on our show who wrote. Um, uh, Gerard de Marigny. Yeah. And he wrote a book that came out around 9-11 and because of the internet, because people were going on the internet and checking out sites that deal with 9-11 and his book was about a terrorist organization that happened around 9-11. Yeah. He woke up one morning, he hadn't been doing any sales and he woke up one morning and I think he said he sold 27 books prior to that. Right. And he woke up, he was number three in, number one in three countries Yeah, and he was selling eight thousand copies an hour. an hour yeah an uh, hour an hour, hour. <laughs> wow so yeah. you know and it propelled him that's the power absolutely so you yeah. never know now now his was by accident in the sense that he didn't realize that because it was dealing with 9-11 and his book was up there and it was a project that dealt with 9-11 you know because of the storyline that that's what propelled him yeah but it is amazing how the internet, people will find you on the internet. And then we had another guy who wrote a book called The Ripper. Same thing happened yes. with him. Right. You know, when they were doing the anniversary, anniversary of Jack the Ripper, yeah. his book took off because, yep. you know, people were interested in The Ripper. And even though it right. was a love story and it didn't really deal that much with Jack the Ripper, it, it had, you know, it, just the name made it take off. Mm -hmm. Well, and mm -hmm. I think it was Ripper, the love story. Yeah. And now people are going, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Well, yeah. that's really interesting because my book says Peace Train, The Love Story. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But yours is a good so, title, too. Just the yeah. words Peace Train, you know, tells yeah. a lot right there. And I think Takes titles me, yeah. are important. Takes me right back to the 60s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm going to let you read the next uh, line there, Renee. Okay. British fantasy writer Neil Gaiman Wandered on, wander on to Neil Gaiman's Tumblr or twi Twitter feed, and you'll find he's always up for a chat. The prolific British fantasy writer is a great democratizer, tearing down the walls between authors and readers and responding to weird and wonderful fan questions, such as this one with the kind of enthusiastic advice you would expect from a friend. It's clear Gaiman respects his readers as fellow creative souls, and his efforts pay off. When he's working on a new project, he can call on his trusty community to get involved. For a calendar of tales, a crowdsourced story project, he tweeted a question each month of the year and then wrote a short story inspired by his favorite fan responses. If you want to be a boss author on the Internet... Neil Gaiman is proof that the sharing better go that sharing goes better both ways. You know that is so interesting because we've done an experiment on the show where we would take an object and then you know when we had a panel of like five people and it each yeah. we would hand it off like I'd start it and then the next person would add to the story and then, and you know we would actually create a story 
on the air when we were live. Murder mystery with a yeah, toothbrush. and we actually create a story. And <laughs> it's interesting how he does that. Like he takes a tweet, and from there he creates a short story. And boy, what a way to keep your fan base, you know, involved. Yeah, really. Yeah. Oh, it's so great. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And Jan, I'm gonna let you take the next Margaret one. Margaret Atwood, the Man Booker Prize winner. Uh, has said she always tries everything. She inhabits a uh, traditional and digital space with the same brilliance that her stories traverse real and speculative worlds. She's an avid, <coughs> pardon me, she's an avid tweeter known for bursts of creative inspiration such as designing superheroes inspired by her fans' Twitter avatars. She is also an early adapter of digital publishing platform Byliner and Wattpage. On Wattpage, she has collaborated with Naomi Alderman on a serials, serials, uh, serialistic uh, zombie novel. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. Uh, she has since encouraged uh, inspiring writers on the platform of running fan fiction contests. Atwood shows that the key to building a broad community of ardent readers is to embrace and champion the changing publishing landscape, not shun it. Oh, that's so, so true. That's kind of neat, though, how she used two different platforms to go out there and engage an audience. Yeah. Almost like challenge them, um, you know, by creating a contest out of it. Yeah, I think that's uh -huh. such a marvelous idea because well, uh -huh. I, uh, that's how you get people really interested. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind for future works. Yeah. <laughs> well, And that's what Neil did. Gaiman. Who? Neil Gaiman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort yeah. of. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Well, um, we had someone on our show named Pat Ritter in the past, not too long ago, actually. Yeah. And he does what's called a page a day. And every day when I open my email, there's a page that he's written the day before of his latest novel. And he blasts that out to all his followers. Now, when he was on my show, he had over 9,000. I'm sure he's up to way more than that now. Oh, yeah. um, and, and it's kind of interesting because he keeps you engaged without giving you too much. And at the same time, you know, we, if you like what he's writing, by the end of it, you're going to want to buy that book. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So, you know, it's pretty smart. To, and, and plus, there's so many aspects to that are there, that are really good in the sense that not only is he giving you a page a day to read and hopefully keep your interest – but if you're a fan, you'd say, but why would that character do that? Or why is it going in this direction? And he may write back and uh -huh. say something like, well, uh -huh. you have to wait to the next you know, chapter. But, yeah. but the thing is, is that you can, you can either correct the work as you go along based on what your fan base is saying. Mm -hmm. you can, they'll find mistakes for you. And trust me, they're always finding mistakes for you yes. <laughs> in the book. So in a way, he's, he's really getting his beta readers that way. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, to critique the book and give him input. I, I, that's a really smart thing that he's done. He's written over 14 books now. Um, we'll have him back on when he finishes the next one. And a charming gentleman he is. Too. Oh, yeah. Very nice guy. Yeah. Such a nice person. Yeah. All right, that's Renee. Great. Yeah, I'm going to let you take the next one. Okay. Taju Cole, the author of Open City, takes inspiration from news stories, pop culture, and history and reinterprets them for the web. While researching his forthcoming book, Legos, he was drawn to local newspapers. This became a project titled Small Fates, a series of grimly ironic tweets based on news reports. Wives are flammable, a police inspector, Wafu, Wasu of Okokomako has found. <laughs> I don't think, I think I murdered that I'm word. I'm glad but you anyway. had to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Cole decided to publish Hafiz. A short story about an ailing homeless man on Twitter. He wanted the story to feel emergent, so he asked his friends to post different parts of the story and then retreated them in order to create the narrative. Oh, that is so that, neat, what though. What a clever it's, idea. And, you know, Twitter is really a great, great platform. So, you, you know, he's getting people to follow him on Twitter to see what he's going to tweet next in a storyline. And then they uh -huh. get, get his Twitter followers to give him ideas. I mean, it really, those are clever ideas. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. For sure. And Jen? Veronica Roth, the author of the Young Adult Divergent series, uh, curates a Tumblr feed called The Art of Not Writing. 
where she mixes writing tips and book-related update with the popular internet memes. She taps into the popularity of uh, animated, I'm sorry, (laughs) animated GIFs GIFs, uh, to respond to fan questions and joins in on broader conversations on the web. The divide between literature and digital content is breaking down. And as the internet generation grows up, the author who understands the trend and finds their voice with within it uh, are the ones to watch. It, you know, the internet, this is really such no, a fascinating No, you know, she's place. smart because I, I know the Divergent series, you know, and, and I love it. But it's interesting how I didn't know, though, that she did have a Tumblr feed where she gets people involved in writing tips and book-related updates. That I did not know. Um, yeah. And it's interesting how people are using GIFs and, and memes to actually get people involved in what they're doing. Um, yeah, I'm telling you, the Internet is fantastic. I wish I knew more about it. <laughs> I, I think we should spend some time off just delving I'm into it. I'm telling you. Well, yeah. you know, they've, they've developed some software. See, I, the one of my drawbacks about the Internet is that it's hard to find your audience. Um, you throw a lot of, uh, you know, paint on the wall and hope some of it sticks. Mm -hmm. But they're now starting to get software that allows you to find and pinpoint your audience so that you can get to them quicker. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, It's going to say, we do that at work, you know, to to get Uh. uh, more clientele. Uh Mm-hmm. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a tool I think everyone's using in every phase of business today. Um. I forgot what it's called. I mean, something algorithms or something like that. Algorithms. Algorithms. Yeah, algorithms. that's what it is. Yeah. 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 And there's one for everything you do nowadays. Yes. Uh, you just put in statistics and it comes up with all these things for you. Yeah. So yeah. it is amazing how that works. Um, sometimes you wonder if the internet knows too much. <laughs> because I'll go research something for the show that has nothing to do with me or may not even be of my specific interest, but because of the various people I have on my show, you know, I'm researching sometimes five or six people at one time. And if I tap into something that they're a part of, whether it be a business or whatever, next thing I know, I'm not talking that, you know, we're talking like five or 10 minutes later, I'm getting these ads pop up when I go to check my email that had something to do with what I was researching. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Same thing with Facebook. If you go like to, let's just say Home Depot, uh-huh. and you're looking for stuff on ho- lamps or whatever, uh-huh. then the next time you get on Facebook, you'll have lamp ads and Home <laughs> Depot and Lowe's and you name it. Yeah. Same with Amazon. Yeah. So Same it, thing. It is amazing that the computer, and it has to be a computer because no one person could, <laughs> yeah, could react that is. quickly. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a but, program. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, I mean, who knows what this world's coming to? Although it's a little scary if you think about it. Yeah, that it can, but it could actually characterize you completely different than what you are if you're just a research person. Because we've talked about this on the show, how people will, you know, if you're not sure, let's say you're writing a, a murder mystery, yeah, um, and you're looking uh, in, you know, trying to find out something about serial killers, what's what's that algorithm going to pick up? Uh, <laughs> that's right. Well, and that's how they actually find some bad guys is because that IP address will say they're looking for how to. How to drown somebody, how to, you know, poison them, how yeah, to shoot them. Yeah. And, and that's how they discover, you know, you can delete anything you want to. <laughs> Pardon me. But once that once that IP address is asked for some information, it's there. It's there forever. Yeah. Well, yeah. Non-erasable. But that's the scary part, though. Yeah. Because if you're just a researcher, you know, if you're just a researcher, yeah. like I research everything. Yeah. You know, it, it's painting a picture of you that's not necessarily you. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. It's about the hundred other people that you were researching. Yes, right. Yeah. You yeah. know. Uh, so yeah. we're, we're just going to talk about the Internet, and we're going to talk about so many different ways. i, I got to tell you something that I never participated in before because I've never written articles before. I, I've never been an article writer. But Morgan St. James, who's one of our panelists, and she's been on the show numerous times, uh-huh. she has this um, quarterly magazine called uh-huh. Writer's Tricks of the Trade. Right. And she asked me to write an article for her for this last magazine. Uh-huh. And so she just sent it to me yesterday. And I, it was interesting to see. I mean, it's like a real magazine. It uh-huh. even flips the pages on, on the screen. 
yeah. like a hmm. real magazine. Yep. Yeah. And then you get to this article that I wrote, and it's like, wow, I didn't know it was that easy. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. So, you know, maybe I'll write some more in the future. So yeah. maybe, I'll, maybe we'll create one for the show. <laughs> That's actually a fantastic idea. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. magazines can really be great. And then I was thinking how, how easy it would be to get some of our authors who like to get their name out there, have them write an article for us, put it on that digital magazine. Yes. Uh-huh. So, yeah. uh-huh. There but yeah, we are. I'm just telling you, it's amazing that, the, and I don't know why I never thought of that before. I, I don't know why I thought a digital magazine would be different than a regular magazine. But she has it set up. It looks just like a regular magazine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, they're great. Wow. Now, That's something for us to do. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and then um, blogs. Um, do you do blogs, um, Renee? Um, I have. Um, when I was developing um, Peace Train, I had a blog that I was doing. Um, and I'm probably going to start doing it once we get the, again, once we get the the next website. Um, and I really, I, I love doing blogs. It's fun. Yeah. And it's fun finding a picture to go with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. That's a good I love idea. doing that. Yeah. 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 Well, when you do your blogs, do you ever attach a video to it, like a link where they could go to a video? Well, I have, I have, well, wait a minute. Maybe I have. Uh, not, you know, I really have, well, I haven't done it very often. I've normally just go find an inspiring picture of some sort mm-hmm. and stick it on there. Uh-huh. But uh, that's a good idea. Well, when I sent the article to her at her request, she asked me, she, she um, wrote me back and she says, James, why don't you put something on about aspects of writing on there? You know, like put aspects of writing.com, put some of the links for where the show can be listened to. And I'm thinking, okay, but who's going to take the time to read that and type it into the address? I'm so dumb. It's a digital magazine. Once she puts it in there, you just click on it and it goes to, yeah. you know, but I didn't think of that either. You know, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, here I am. I, I've been doing this show for six years now and I'm still learning. Every day I'm learning something yeah. from the people who've been on. Yeah. So, yeah. So blogs, you know, in a way, the magazine is a blog, um, Uh but it is amazing the things that you can do today. We talk all the time as well when it comes to the Internet now. I know you know about um, QR codes, um, Renee, Mm -hmm. and how we actually have people who incorporate QR codes into the books. I did that with one book I have, Uh um, and, you know, we got the idea from someone who was on our show. They wrote an actual novel. Right. But because it involved uh, Afghanistan and a soldier who was over there who took truly took videos while he was there with his cell phone yeah. during battles, um, sounds weird, but you'd have to understand wow. his explanation for it, you know, because he said, you see it one way, we see it another way when we're involved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's hard to get into that mindset unless you read the book. Yes. And that was, mm-hmm. what is that book, Jan, that was on, on, on two, two sides? Oh, on, on two, two fronts. fronts. Yeah, on two fronts. Yeah. yeah. The home front. Then Adam the Finner front. and uh, Lance Talbot. Yeah. Huh. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, that was the first time I'd heard of someone using QR codes yeah. for a book because what they do, each chapter or each, wherever in the page where it related to a video where they could actually show the video what they were talking about, they would create a QR code and then they'd have the video on YouTube so you just click on that QR code, and you could go watch the video that explained what they were talking about in the book. And it's not just about the war stuff. It's about the stuff the guys were doing while they were between fights, you yeah, know, yeah. to keep themselves entertained and to right. keep from thinking about what was going on. And some of the stuff that our soldiers are doing is pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would be crazy, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think it's awful that... We send them there. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's let the leaders go. <laughs> uh, I agree. Let them just duke it out. Absolutely. Um, yeah, let them duke it out, yeah. really. And then we had the two um, nurses on. Yes. Who, you know, Laura Wolf and Julie Kabernick. I, I, I can't, can't pronounce her name. Anyway, she, they wrote a book um, about, oper- you know, having children. Having, children yeah. going to have surgery. Yes, it's the called Surgery, surgery Day. Day. And, yeah. and it is so yeah, cute. it is so good. Yeah. And if you get it, someone, you know, wh- whoever's listening, they should go back and look at that episode because they were really good. And they talked endlessly about how they created that book. It took them several years yeah. and they refined it by going and, and speaking to children and getting their idea of 
what the character should look like, what the names yeah. should be, because yeah. they name them something and say, but why weren't they named that? Or why, and why yeah. are you using this? Why wouldn't you use a lion instead of a tiger or whatever? You know? Right. <laughs> so it was really yeah. good how, you know, it was really cute how they came up through the whole process, but they use QR codes yeah. because mm-hmm. they think, you know, we think that children aren't intelligent, but they are because mm-hmm. children, they're growing up with the technology of today. So a three-year-old knows how to work a cell phone probably better than I do. Yeah. And they certainly can get on the computer and, yeah. and look at things. So now if, if, if they don't understand, you know, what goes into having surgery when it comes to having, um, the anesthesia, oxygen, oxygen yeah, everything. they have a QR code and it'll actually take you to a video they did that explains in, in terminology a child can understand right. what they're going to go through on surgery day. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they're not afraid, you know, when mm-hmm. it comes to that day. And even mm-hmm. like they explained, even if they're going to be asleep, because they'll put them to sleep before they ever go into a room, mm-hmm. they don't have to fear what's going to happen to me when I'm in there because right. they can mm-hmm. see what's going to happen to them when they're in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. a cute little children's story, which is easy for them to read. And at the same time, if they want it to be a little more informative, they could actually watch a video to understand mm-hmm. it better. And then mm-hmm. they're not frightened, and, and it's not, you know, when, when the nurse comes in and she says, okay, I need you to take this pill, they know what is going to happen, that, that this is a good thing. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. And even having blood drawn, that mm-hmm. was the other thing. When I started mm-hmm. writing, we couldn't do something like this on the Internet because oh. the Internet was a new form of entertainment, really. Right. Um, and they didn't have all these platforms. Right. Yeah. So it, it is amazing that that's what you can do with the internet today. Mm-hmm. Now we also talked about live chats. Have you ever done a live chat on any of the formats? Um, I have, and it's almost like um, I've done a ton of radio shows where it's live, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which is similar to that. We did that when we were at the studio on KLAV. We, I had a guy who worked in the studio, and f- he was from outside the studio, but he worked in the studio with me. And he would actually, he would actually blast us out there live on Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter, and yeah. uh-huh. I guess a couple other formats. And we were live while we were actually filming live on the air at KLAV right. as well. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we did that then, but I, it's kind of a little different than a chat um, because uh, John David Mann, who's another best-selling author, Uh John actually does that with his fan base. He'll go on periodically and and let his fan base know on such and such date at such and such time, I'm going to be available for discussion, maybe about his next book or whatever. And so he actually touches his fan base live on those formats and discusses his book with them, and they can ask him questions or whatever. Uh Uh-huh. So So this is like... um, um yeah, it's like a live video, like on Facebook, uh-huh. because you can interact with, you just have to type your question in, right. and then they respond back. Absolutely, uh-huh. yeah. 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 Which is great. Yeah, and now you know there's even new formats out there to where you can interact with hundreds or thousands of people across the world at one time. Yeah. Uh, I take lessons, or I took lessons in the past from Screenwriting You, and... With Hal Crossman, what he does is that he's live on the phone, and you've got all those people listening, and they'll actually show you in a corner, in a counter, how many people are online at one time, 25,000, 30,000. And what's interesting is is that he opens it up for discussion afterwards. Obviously, the computer is probably filtering out, like, this one's next, this one's next, or whatever, because you couldn't possibly do it yourself. No. Um, But then people are allowed to come on one by one and ask a question. So Uh there are formats out there for even doing that on the Internet. Uh Hmm, That's a consideration. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great one. Yeah. And then we get to Internet radio. (laughs) (laughs) Which I really like. (laughs) You know, we do have a live portion of the show in Florida every Uh Saturday at 1 p.m. But in addition to that, after the show, it's it's blasted, you know, out over the Internet. Right. Roku TV, YouTube mainly Roku TV and live stream and those yeah. different outlets. So the Internet is a tremendous tool today. Uh, a lot of people, and, and including myself in the past, when I started out, I always thought a radio interview was the way to go or maybe a television interview. But now you have television on the Internet. Right. 
and you have mm-hmm. radio on the internet. Yep. Mm-hmm. And even we have a video portion on the internet. So, mm-hmm. you know, today it's it's a different world today, and it's easier to actually make contact with people on the internet than it is through radio or television. Mm-hmm. Uh, to give you an example, a TV show in the past when there were only the three big networks, it. I remember when Mork and Mindy came out, that uh-huh. first season, they commanded a 60 million o- person audience yeah. for each episode in that first season. Yeah. Think about that, 60 million. Today, if they had 16 million, they would be a runaway hit. Yeah. Because there's so many outlets out there now right. on, on regular television yeah. that you're competing all over the place. Yeah. It's kind of the same way on the internet, but at the same time, for the internet blogger, it used to be a podcast was something that was very unusual. Right. And then if you heard of a podcast, you'd say, oh, I don't want to be on a podcast. You know, hook me up with KLAB or another network. Yeah. But today, it almost behooves you to go on internet radio to get your name out there because yeah. you uh-huh. they have a bigger audience uh-huh. than, you know, your local stations. Yeah. Or most of them. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> That's what we're doing with our book, um, with my book, is that we've done a bunch of podcasts. Uh-huh. Well, I'm wondering if, if a lot of these that are super successful, uh, they're so controversial. Yeah. Though. And um, so then that makes our competition even greater because we're there to help and they're there to mix things up. Well, but you know, <laughs> but what's interesting is, is the power of how it all works, though. Yeah. I mean, I always wanted, I, first of all, I never wanted to do a radio show. That wasn't something I ever thought I was ever going to do. <laughs> And so then when I did get into radio, I thought, wow, this is fantastic. I'm actually on a radio show, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yep. And so it was kind of neat knowing I'm on a local station. Yeah. And when I had to give up that station because they changed formats right. and they didn't do the talk radio like <clears throat> right. our format. So I thought, now what am I going to do? And for a long time, I was looking around trying to find another local station to get involved right. in. And it's not that easy. And then there was a few places in Phoenix I was looking at, and I debated, should I drive back and forth, or would I just record here somewhere in another studio? And, and send yeah. it there. So yeah. I thought, yeah, you know. And I'm glad I took my time, because yeah. then I thought, what I'll do with this, I'm going to try the internet. That's what I really thought. Uh-huh. I thought, I'm going to go out there and see what happens if I just go on the internet. And the one station I signed up with, I had actually interviewed the owner. He also is an author, and he had been on my show. And then he'd interview me with a book that I had that came out. Uh-huh. And so I thought, you know what? I'm just going to give it a chance. I, then I found out he also had a few terrestrial stations as well. He had yeah. Like 14. Yeah. So, you know, I thought, well, I, I'm going to get the best of both worlds. I'm going to get uh-huh. the terrestrial stations, but then I'm also going to get the exposure on the Internet. But by uh-huh. far, the exposure on the Internet is greater than what I have on the terrestrial stations. Yeah. It, in fact, it's about 10 times as much. Yeah. So it, it's amazing what we have today. And because think about it, I didn't know, I didn't know how to work my, I have, you know, the car radio where you can speak to someone through your phone. Right. Through the, the, the radio. But I never thought about blog talk radio. Like, how would that work? I didn't know I was blog talk radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but, you know, you can tune into our show yep. and then pull it up on the radio. Yes. And listen yeah, to it. Yeah, it'll go yeah. through. It'll be a Bluetooth. But I right. didn't know that. Yeah. I, I didn't realize yeah. that I could do that as well. Well, actually, you yeah. can just go to Auxiliary and listen to it there yes. as well. Yeah. So, you know, there's all the Internet is really a, a fantastic tool for anyone trying to get their name out there. And to show mm-hmm. you just how much this is the normal is all the new cars since 2015 are created so that you just plug your phone in for those auxiliary shows. Okay. So that they they So you can do, program it. Yeah. Yeah, so you can So the, all cars? All cars since 2015 are set wow. up to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So so when they're driving to work, they plug in to blog radio or something else. Yeah, or uh, well, right into us. They you can go right yeah. to you can go right to aspectsofwriting.com. Go down to the show, click it on, and now you're listening to us on your radio in your car. Well, now also we're on different formats because like we're on right. iHeartRadio, so you just tune right. into iHeartRadio. Yeah, you know, go into aspects of writing there. Yeah, we're on iTunes, so if yeah. you have an iTunes account, you just go into your iTunes account, can bring yeah. us up that way. I mean, it really is a fantastic thing. And I listened to one 
particular station most of the time in my car when I'm driving back and forth as well when it comes to music. And about every other commercial is like on iHeartRadio. So they're uh -huh. syndicated through iHeartRadio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even though they're on a local station, that local station has picked them up through iHeartRadio. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and people don't realize iHeartRadio is really an internet format. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it's a tremendous tool. And, and I think that's what we all have to learn, and, and myself included. We just have to learn how it works. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, for someone my age, it's not as easy as someone who's 20. Right. Uh -huh. You know, who was raised with uh -huh. it. Who was raised with it. Yeah. They really get a better concept of, of right. how it works. Right. Because they assumed it was always there. Yeah. Uh -huh. But for the authors, the late bloomers who are out there writing, we yeah. have to learn how does this all come together. There is a way. I mean, we just talked about Amanda Hawking. I, yeah. You know, she was a young lady when she started doing this. Right. She was in her early 20s. Yeah. So she probably understood it better because she grew up with that whole right. concept yes. of the Internet. And that's probably why she was very successful. She knew how to go out there and market on yeah. the Internet. Um, and she's not the only one. There's other authors yeah. who've done that as well. So, you know, I think it's just a matter of us tapping into the audience that we need. And I happen to agree with you, Renee. I'm probably going to have to pay someone to do some of this for me. <laughs> yes. Wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if you don't know. It, it, I mean, some they, they have teams of people that can do a whole lot more than you can do. Yeah. And yeah. sure, there are programs that will tweet for you and post for you, but... Um, sometimes you just need people doing it. Well, you know, and, yeah, just like with PR people, you know, the PR people who send out their authors to be on the different shows. Yeah, they have they have people they go to who have a list, who have a tried and true list yeah. of audience, you know, out there uh -huh. and right. formats. And so sometimes those PR people will go to those people, like Jackie Lappin, for instance, is uh -huh. one person people right. turn to. Um, they'll go to her. So that they can get a list to know where to put their people on yes. the radio. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting how that works as well. You know, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it, there's always a way if you want to do it, there's a way to find out how to do it. And the yeah. beauty of this show is, is anybody who listens to this show who has a question, all you got to do is go to aspects of dot com <laughs> and send us a message. We'll get the answer. Oh, yeah. And we'll get right back to you. I, ha I actually love having that contact part because that's really how I get some of the authors as well. Yes. You know, it's, yeah. it's through there. And, and anybody that's who can great. write a sentence can be an author because once you write that first sentence, you're on your way. You know, and I think <laughs> I, I, now that you brought that up, I do want people to understand a little bit about the show. This show is really a format to help the authors, yes. all authors. And we do like yeah. to talk to authors like Renee. Oh, you know, absolutely. And find out what they're doing and what their projects are and what the next thing is they're going to be doing. But we're really here to help the authors, to help them understand what we're talking about, how the Internet works, you know, how to get your name out there once you've got your work published. Right. Um, and How we, to get your work published. I, li I like authors from every walk of life, every genre, and it doesn't matter to me whether you're a novice writer or you're, you know, a five million bestseller or whatever. You know, we, right. we want the experience and we also want the, the person who wants to learn. Yeah. Because so, we learn from each other. When we talk That's about right. what we're doing right now, I learned from Renee just a few things I've written down. She probably doesn't even know it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Same here. <laughs> and, you know, so that's the whole thing about this show. And here yeah. again, it's if you're on the Internet listening to this, there's a tool right there. And the beauty uh -huh. of our show is you can listen to this show over and over and over. <laughs> <laughs> I know. that not that great? It, yeah. Yes, that is, is. That's what's great. Yeah. Yes. That is really great. And that's the other thing. Today, you can archive these. Like, I archive them on my website. Uh -huh. but, you know, AMFM 24-7 archives them on their website. Yeah. So, it's never going to get lost. It's always going right. to be somewhere, you yes. know, where you uh -huh. can pick it up. If we do the video, it's logged on my YouTube. It's also logged on AMFM's channels. So, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter if you missed a show. You can go pick it up anytime you want. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, Renee, you have anything to add to this? I just think this is neat. <laughs> 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 Pretty exciting stuff, actually. It really it is. Really is. Yeah. And you know what? The thing that I really, that, that hit me as we were talking, the internet is unlimited. Yes. Right. And it's, 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 it's about us, too. We are unlimited. We have tremendous potential. It's whatever and the so, imagination can come up with. Yeah. And yeah. the internet is just like that. Yeah. It's unlimited. Yeah. 
And since you're an expert at teaching people how to learn, uh, you know, peace train, uh, and you're smarter than you think, uh, I got to get that. And I got to get that as soon as this show's over. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to need uh, it. I need that reassurance myself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> using my brain the way oh, it was gosh. designed have you seen the design of my brain <laughs> i got news for you uh, have i seen the design boy <laughs> have i seen it yeah it's like a sponge. it's a beauty yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well renee why don't you tell our listeners one more time where they can learn about both peace train and i, I really want them to go to your other site as well okay well if you want to know about if you want to learn more effectively, go to you are smarter than you think dot com. You have to write it all out okay. one time, and then you can go to it. And my other uh, for finding out about Peace Train, um, go to Peace Train Movie dot com, and it'll take you to our Facebook page now. But eventually, it'll get us to our uh, web page, which is in the process. Marvelous. All right. So, well, I would like to thank our guest, director, writer, and producer, Renee Mullen Masters, along with my panelist, Janet Corsi. And to find links of the various places our show is broadcast, you can just go to aspectsofwriting.com. That's aspectsofwriting.com. And there you'll find all the links to the syndicated show, iHeartRadio, iTunes, AMFM 24-7, Spreaker, Roku TV, YouTube, and more. In addition, we also archive all of our shows on Aspects of Writing, and we're now on Blog Talk Radio as well. Um, and all the shows will be um, archived, archived on, on Blog yep. Talk Radio. And we're on iTunes. So you just go to iTunes, go to your iTunes accounts, click on podcast, type in Aspects of Writing, and it'll take you to the link you need for Aspects okay. of Writing on you, uh, iTunes. iTunes. So until next week, this is your host, James Kelly, reminding you, if you can dream it, you can write it. Thank you so much, Renee. Thank you, Jen. Thank Renee, you. What a pleasure to meet you. Oh, thank you. Same. Right at. Back at you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks again, Renee. Bye. Okay. Bye.